Hi guys, it's PS. Today we will continue Pro's Habits 4 with the topic of supports roaming. When is the perfect timing? Before we start, we need to understand that there is no answer for the perfect roaming timing. Especially because it is so connected to jungle's routes with your 80s performance and every pro has a different roaming style, it is hard to set perfect rules. Also, once the patch 10.3 is applied that will bring changes to jungle's routes, roaming would be affected too. So, based on today's gameplays, the takeaway would be, hmm, one could make that decision at the situation. The first game is Leona by Lee Hens. Enemy support is Morgana. The matchup is favorable in Talia and Leona in the beginning. Let's see what happens. Today, we will not only talk about roaming, but also the basics of support. This is what a lot of pros commonly do. Use the ward trinket and switch it to the sweeper right away. First, warding doesn't cancel your recall. Second, a ward at the raptors will tell you if Irelia wards at the raptors later. Third, Talia and Leona have push priority. Having the sweeper will grant more pressure in the bush. This game is a great start for Bomb. Meanwhile, we started solo boost, enemy bot lead for Carthus, so they gotta control over the lane. This gives them two advantages. First, if enemy does not come to the lane right away, they can have trade advantage by positioning better. Second, like Talia doing, they can deny a melee minion. As you see right now, Talia throws Q2 enemy coming from the river to distract them and deny a melee. Leona also trades aggressively with Aftershock. Let's fast forward and continue watching the laning. As they deny CS with lane priority, they see Karthus at top. Then Leona pings all my way and uses their turn. Even though she missed, she decides when to engage or just put pressure with reasons. Right now, you can see how powerful Talia and Leona comp is. If Talia's W landed, Morgana could have died. This is why Leona controls the bush and enemy cannot confront. And there are two another reasons why they can be so aggressive. One, Lee's around bot. And two, they hit level 3 first while Morgana is still level 2. Maybe Lee's solo blue star snowballed all of this. Since they saw Morgana use Q and W, they know she doesn't have a black shield. So Lee's quick backup ends up with a double. Now, thinking back to pros habits 1, 2, and 3, we can talk about the lane management. When you want to recall after a fight, you need to think ahead about the lane when you come back to the lane. They have more minions and the third wave is coming. Simply, if they recall right away, the wave will form in front of enemy's turret with more ally minions, including the siege minion. Then, enemy can slow push the wave. Also, they will be pressured from enemy's gank. So, since Lee Hands have Minion, Dematerializer, and Carbon, and both of them have enough power, they clear the Siege Wave and Recall. Even though they can get a plating, they are strict at the lane management. Doing so, ally Siege Minion head bumps to the turret. Actually, you don't necessarily have to push the wave in the situation every time. It all depends on your health, enemies' laners, and jungle's position. You can follow the criteria before you recall. 1. Check if you have to push or not. 2. Think about how the wave will be formed when you come back to the lane. 3. If you have to push, consider the enemy's location and a possible fight. Try to question yourself in this order. Back to the game, since her comp is so strong in lane, she doesn't have to roam. Roaming definitely has a cost. And the return is not guaranteed. If you think you can snowball your lane like this game, focus on your lane. Especially in Challenger, if your team has a top ADC like Ruler, Gumayushi, Teddy, or Death, supports focus on the laning more than roaming. Making them fed will win the game. Roaming obviously puts a pressure on your ADC. 
on this game, Leona doesn't have a reason to roam, so we will watch another game. Oh, before we move on, you can see that the enemy can't slow push long enough. Since ally siege minion died to the turret, enemy cannot control the wave easily. This time, it's Rakan by Li Hen. Rakan is more mobile than Leona, and he will have an interesting roaming match against Bard. Again, he wars as he recalls and switch to the sweeper. Recall takes 8 seconds, so he holds his ward until the very end. This time, however, the ward is placed at the red. This is to check whether the red gets taken since Zaya saw enemy invading. And naturally, Elise is considering to take enemies red or not to split the jungle. The pathing is very delicate. Since he still doesn't know where the enemy is, he walks far from the bush. Enemy pings to this a what the fuck ping. Lava's play is even more interesting. First, he saw enemy invading their jungle. After removing the ward, he wards in front of the golems. We find these plays very delicate. Rengar has three options after taking the red. Either to raptors, golems, or a level 2 bot gank through golems. His ward can check all of these possibilities. If Rengar takes golems to hit level 3, he'll get punished by Lihens and Lava Dio. And since it's ally jungle, their mid will back up faster which will totally screw Rengar. Pros naturally consider all of these scenarios. The upcoming play shows the best timing to trade as a support. A trade is not just to simply auto and see if you win or lose. The rule of thumb is to see if they have any risks of getting ganked. But they know Rengar is going to the Raptors. An Omnistone Bard has Glacial Augment at the moment. They are sure that Guardian Rakan can trade in their favor. And Zaya Rakan's early combat is obnoxious, so they initiate an aggressive trade. Wasting Caitlyn's Flash, who doesn't have a good escape ability, can lead to a huge snowball by Elise. Since Kate starts with low health, she's being very defensive, and they naturally get a lane priority. Just like the last game, Lehens controls the bush to deny. In Pro's Habits 2 and 3, we learned about the scuttler timing through Chovy's Habits. It was to push the wave to the turret at the scuttler timing so that the ally jungle can have an advantage in the scuttler fight. Currently, Bot forms a giant wave of second and cannon waves using their lane priority. Even though Elise is at the enemy's red, this play would help your jungle a lot if he is trying to take the bot scuttler. Even more, if you slow push and add another wave, enemy jungle cannot get bot. If it does, it would be a force game. Push the wave and move to the scuttler. We will see all possible advantages he can have by pushing the wave. 1. Punishing Rengar at the Scuttler time. 2. If Rengar already took the Scuttler, or if Scuttler is alive, they can punish him in the blue side jungle. 3. Since Elise is heading to top side, they can take the Scuttler. 4. They can use the Scryer's Blum to check Rengar's jungling. If he is not in the blue side, you can ping retreat to your top and mid. 5. Get a Kali a lane priority. This means that even if LeBlanc has a priority, since only Zaya and Rakan can roam while LeBlanc has no vision, she has to play defensively. If you see the game right now, they don't see Rengar with the Scryer's Blum, so they ping on enemy's golems to warn top. Due to the ping, Elise doesn't take a risk on Scuttler and gangs top straight. This play was possible since they pushed a huge wave into the turret. If they were playing a squishy champion, they could punish enemies after pushing the wave. But in higher elo, moving to the clouded area impacts every enemy player. If they did not communicate where Rengar was, Elise could either gank top or take the scuttler with 50% chances. And if she went for Scuttler, Rengar could use the bush and punish Elise or even grab kill. 
Bot did not directly go to top, but providing the information helped their team to make a better decision. This is the turning point of the game. They have a huge wave coming from early lane push, and they could happily farm that. But they saw Rengar with Bounty in their jungle, and they used this moment to take more advantages to a faster backup. Actually, it was a close fight. Luckily, Akali gets there earlier, so they trade Rakan with 3 kills. And this gives Lee Hands the first timing to roam. There are two big roaming timings during the laning or recall timing. But support's roaming leaves ADC alone at bot. So it is important to roam when ADC minimizes his loss. Then it needs a concrete reason. Right now, it is right after 4v4 fight at bot and everyone has to recall. What is worse is enemy bot duo is now leaving the base and Zaya is about to recall after managing the lane. Thus, even though Rakan goes bot now, he can only last in minion. Therefore, he's heading top who's in lane. If you see top, wave is getting pushed, and even though Camille has a flesh to survive, Kled will hit level 6 first and probably start a fight. If Camille dies when Kled hits level 6, she will lose a huge wave to the turret. Kled is probably looking forward to it. At this timing, enemy top cannot possibly think of support roaming. Eventually, Camille gets a kill due to Lee Han's roam, and Kled is even more punished since he doesn't have TP. This roam is the ideal roaming timing. As you see, Zaya pushed the wave while enemy bot was getting back, and now she is recalling. So even though Rakan wasn't with her, she was safe. Observe Lee Han's pathing afterward. As he checks the LeBlanc doesn't have flash and wave is formed toward Akali, he ganks mid with release. Actually, Bar roamed as well since Zaya recalled and Tate has to farm their wave under the turret. But at 5.59, he was spotted with a ward, so Lee Hans counters with Elise. Let's see Rakan's next roaming timing. Again, since he checks all the enemies at top, he goes for a solo kill. Then, since his health is low and pushed the wave already, he recalled. And this is his second roaming timing. If you see the bot lane, the wave is getting pushed. Zaya will be under the turret, so she won't get punished or die. Of course, there is a possibility that Rengar dives to the turret and kills her. If so, only Camille has TP who can cover. And if she cannot TP, they can just take the rift. Since enemy bot is not lethargic, instead of protecting Zaya farming, Lee Hens decides to add more pressure on top and mid to initiate more fights including at the rift. At the same time, using champion's characteristics, Bard is actively roaming and tries to control vision with his fire's club and look for fights at top and mid. As a result, even though the laning is not over, there is a huge fight in the top side. If one of the supports was just walking back bot, they could call support difference. At the same time, since all four of enemies are at the top side, Lava actively looks for a fight and grabs a solo kill, and this actually decides the game. The video can get insanely long, so we would like to stop here. Since it is our first support video, we included general support tips other than just roaming. So you may still be unclear when to roam. Think of this video as a cornerstone. On the next pros habits, we would build up the roaming timing in depth. We appreciate your view. Thank you.